Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a first person replay video of my recent tournament match that I was playing against Pandemic 21 on Wednesday. I decided that I actually don't really need to hide my tournament matches because people are going to see the replays anyway, so I might as well make some videos off of it, you know, get more videos to the channel because there were a lot of people viewing my earlier videos and a lot of new subscribers. Thank you all for subscribing. I'm really excited. I didn't really expect that many subscribers, that many views. I guess Rock Paper Shotgun is a great site to have your stuff advertised on. Anyway, so to the game, I'm playing Grekin. I haven't seen what Pandemic is playing yet. I'm currently going for something a bit more... a bit more safe and then economic. Building Octos and then from there building resource processors so I can, just in case, have the Octos there if I get rushed. But I am going to build resource processors fairly quickly off of those Octos. Just want to make sure that they can patrol around. At this point, they're just going on attack move, or patrol actually, going patrolling around the front of the base just in case something chronoports back to now. Although I think, I'm not sure if it can, I'm I'm pretty sure it's possible. There's some strategies that involve double chronoporting that can get you back to one minute or so into the game. But those are really expensive and fairly risky. They don't come up often, but just in case, I'm just being safe here. Anyway, getting another Octo coming up for another resource processor on Q Plasma and Seppi as well for Reef. So Seppi is got the Reef, so now I have my tech built up. From here I'm going to get another Faro, and then there we are, there's the Faro. Then I need to get more Octos and some maybe some Seppis just to double check what my opponent's doing because I don't know what he's playing yet. Oh, never mind, he's playing Grekum. I can hear the... I don't know if you can hear that, but yes, you can hear what everyone else is doing, and that was the sound of Grekum Pro Generation. So, it's a Grekum versus Grekum match, and it looks like I still haven't been attacked, which is good, because Grekum can be very aggressive, and this is Urban Brawl, which I should have pointed out before. This is a fairly small map. As you see, my main base is here, and the main base of my opponent is right here, and it's not a very long rush distance. It's very easy to get units from there to here. So, I'm going to, have to be very careful. Once again, I have my Faro, pod, or Faro scouting, just in case Faro pods come up or other cloak units, because Faros can scout cloak units. I'm going to be building some defenses as well later on, because I want to make sure that I can block off any Faro pod attacks. And domes are detectors. All turrets are detectors, actually. And are also apparently really good against bombers. So that is my main strategy here. So there's a dome coming up. The spire will be coming up now as well. So I'm going to have air units very quickly. Getting defenses up as well, because I don't know exactly what Pandemic's doing. He's further into the future, so my guess is that he's gotten air units, he's getting... Well, he's got he's getting Aspire, he's getting Chronoporting, and he's going to be Chronoporting units back to where I am. Or to when I am, that is. At this point, I'm just building up, like I said, building up my defenses. I'll need to get some Seppies later on, but the Domes are my main defense at this point, because they're very strong for their cost, and also they have a handy little beam attack down here. I'll just point it out. Any little beam attack that... Oh, never mind. It looks like... Okay, I'm being attacked in the future with some Faros, and just gonna double check. So I was just going to the future just to double check what I'm attacking, and just as a warning, this this game's gonna have a lot more jumping than most of my games, because this was a tournament match, and one of the things that I do when I'm really playing competitively is I jump around a lot to make sure that what's going on is what I think is going on. I want to make sure I'm aware what is going on when it's relevant on the timeline. I'm also building a, as you can see, a Faro and Seppi going to the north, building a causally independent triad. So this way, if I get rushed and my main base gets destroyed, which hopefully it won't, two domes, fairly powerful defense, but just in case, I will have a backup base to the north. Also right next to all these resources, so I'll have a really well-stocked backup base to the north. While at the same time, my main base is fairly well defended, but when it comes to chronoporting, that can change very quickly. And I also don't have any Seppies right now, and that would be that might be a good idea if my opponent is planning on chronoporting some units back. At this point, I'm just going to scout out to see what he is doing. Or double check to make sure that I know what's going on. But yeah, I need to get make sure this this per generation was working out properly. And just to double check, I want to make sure that the Octos go there to make sure I know what my opponent's up to, because I actually haven't scouted him yet. I've just gone off of sound, so I know he's playing Grekum, and I'm kind of going off of what he's attacked me with in the future, but I haven't actually scouted out what he's doing right now. And it looks like, here's the attack that I saw in the future with the Faros. So the Octos are coming in, one of the Octos is... I must have told him to go back, anyway. 
So the Octopus is going in. The Octopods are coming in to help out as well. Should make sh fairly short work of the Faros, but... Oh, there are more Faros coming in. So actually, the Octopus will are dead. So the Octopods are hanging out here just for defense as well. Send them a bit. I should send them out forward just in case, but I'm not entirely sure because they may be needed at base for defense. However, it looks like I'm not being attacked further right now, but then my opponent could always go back in time and attack me then once again. So I want to be careful about when I attack and where I attack with my octopods. But at the same time, I'm building up my expansion up to the north, getting a lot of resource processors to the north, and also getting a Seppi just, just for like, first response anti-air. And a Faropod, so I finally have my own air units. I do not have Chronoporting yet, but I do have air units. And, oh my, okay, so in the future I'm getting attacked very heavily by a lot of units. So right here is going to be a huge attack, so I've got to prepare for that. Now I'm just going to be devoting all my resources to preparing for that attack. Now the Faropod coming up, that's probably not going to be enough. The domes do help. The long range beam is an incredibly useful tool for getting rid of attacking armies, but it can be tricky to use, and it requires a lot of attention and... I do have Chrono Energy, thankfully, at this point, but it is something that requires some manual attention. So, Faropod's coming in here, just to double check, I want to see where his forces are. Because he's going to be attacking me very soon, and I don't know where his forces are coming from. But it looks like they're not coming from the north, they must be coming fr directly from his base, I just must have missed it the first time, and no, okay, never mind. See in the timeline, the attack is getting undone, so it looks like, it looks like Pandemic didn't completely do that attack. In the future, it's still happening, but it looks like further in the past, he cancelled it. Not sure exactly why, but I guess he was just trying to use the to scout to see if my defenses were that strong. Well, at this point, I'm still going for he heavy economy, trying to just hold off barely with what I can, trying to get some economy going, trying to get further advanced tech, and now I'll be starting to send back some units, because here's the attack. Here we go. Okay, now this is the attack that I saw coming in before. So we gotta get rid of these Faros. Unfortunately, there's a lot of Faros, so the Faropod is not gonna be effective cloaked. However, if I can get rid of these Faros pretty quickly, the Faropod will be completely impervious to the Octopod attacks. And at the same time, another Faropod is coming in back here. So he's got a lot of Faros and Octopods coming in, but not a lot... Not a lot of anything else. However, Faros are fairly generalist units, and Octopods are very powerful against ground. The only thing that Octopods have a hard time against would be Faropods, but there isn't enough... There are too many Octopods for Faropods, so it's not going to be very easy for me to get around. Well, at the same time, I found his south base, so Pandemic has expanded a bit to the south as well. Which leaves me in a bit of an advantageous position, because I have far more resource crates in my direct control than he does. It's about... See, I have two more QP crates, and... It looks like three more liquid... Yeah, three more liquid crystal crates. And here come... Okay, so the Faro's coming in again, so the Octos... My Octos coming in, Octopod coming in from the back. I need to get my dome... I think my dome may be out of range to actually... No, it's not! It will be able to hit it, but... It may not be the best idea to hit... There we go! Hit the Octopod! So actually, that was a good idea. So, I managed to hit the Octopod. So that Octopod's been heavily weakened, but unfortunately my Octopod needs to retreat back to base to get under cover of the domes, because I do not have a huge attack force yet. I'm really focusing on getting rid of this expansion, a Pandemic's expansion, because it is very dangerous. If he has the, if he has the economy... I mean, at this point he already has a fairly powerful attack force, those mostly base class units. If he doesn't have... Oh, crap. Okay, so now a Seppi's coming in as well, and unfortunately I forgot to cloak this Faropod, so that's not going to last very long at all. Crap. Okay, so my, I do know where he's expanded to, which is good. But unfortunately, my expansion thwarting attempts ultimately failed, and it looks like... Have I... Yes, I have still hit the Octopod, so the Octopod destruction is still consistent. So, what we saw before the battle is still what happened. We're just watching it again. I just wanted to make sure, because I noticed that my Faropod was being attacked. So my Faropod did not ultimately do much damage. However, I have another Faropod coming in, which I will be using for defense primarily. Because at this point, there comes the attack. Okay, so another attack, so or the same attack rather, but coming in again. Two Octopods and a Faro coming in behind them, but one of the Octopods is soon to be destroyed. The other Octopod is going to be destroyed. There we go. So, like I said, the Beam is a very powerful weapon. It has the health of Octopods, and it's just very powerful. I'm not sure the exact numbers for every other unit, but... Octopus, at the very least, two beam hits will kill them. So it's very effective. The only downside is that because of the regeneration time, it takes about a minute between shots. So for that minute, you're fairly vulnerable. I mean, the domes are powerful defenses as well, but you don't have the beam, which is one of the things that makes domes exceptional as far as defensive structures go. And as you can see, I'm continuing to build Octos, which is kind of a bad idea given that my opponent has gone more for air. I really should be building more Seppies, but... 
I wasn't expecting air quite this quickly. I'll I'll have to build more Seppies up as well. Mostly I'm focusing on getting these Octopus though, because they are the more powerful units. Seppi Pod is strong, but it's mostly strong against air units. If I can get rid of that, then really it's it's open for air. But at this point, what I really need to worry about is the ground forces, because the Octopods are very tough against ground. And having the Semipod there does make it tough for me to hit with a Faropod, which would be the weakness. And oh my goodness, okay, so three Faropods coming in. Oh crap, so one of the Faropods is dead. Another Faropod is gone, has gone in range of my Seppi, but it's hard to tell. It has gone in range of the Dome as well. So the Dome and the Seppi are going to be able to take care of that Faropod. Another Faropod coming in as well. I think it's out of the range of the Dome, I'm not sure. And it looks like... It's been destroyed as well. Okay. And I have a couple seven pods coming in as well to finish off. So that attack was thwarted, thankfully. But that was close. And I do have, as mentioned before, I do have a backup base at the top with a spire of its own. So it's a fully functional backup base. So I'm send these heavy pods out just to scout out in front of me. Make sure I know that any attacks aren't coming. Although, since Pandemic is about a minute and a half behind me, I'm a bit worried. It looks like I'm going to be attacked fairly soon. But... For the moment, I'm more concerned about making sure I protect what I have now. I will need to get Gate Tech as well. Need to rebuild domes. Build another dome probably as well, because that was very close. If it hits me as a stronger force, I'm gonna need more domes. And I know I know this sounds really weird because, of course, most people will say that in real-time strategy games you should really focus on offense over defense. However, when it comes to Grekim, because their forces the way their forces are set up, it's they're fairly expensive, so you can't have them in many places at once. You, they're very chunky forces. That is, whatever you spend on Grekim for power is going to be concentrated in fewer units than it is for other races. So having static defense is really effective at covering your ground when you have to have units going out to attack. Anyway, here comes another attack. So it looks like three Farpods and once again, beams are coming in. So one of the Farpods has been destroyed. The other Farpod is about to be destroyed and the last Farpod is fully at full health. So, this is going to be a very tricky fight. A bunch of Seppies coming in, but they're going to be completely destroyed by the Octopods. They need to be able to find that Faropod first, but I don't think it's going to be done in time. The Faropod is cloaked. Crap, because these Seppies are not going to be doing any good for me. Another dome is coming up, as I said before. I do have three domes up. I have been just building up Octos in my north base as well. Nothing really too special. I just want to make sure that I have some basic defenses up there. Primarily, like I said, that base is a backup. I don't think my opponent is aware that I even have that base yet. And at this point, it looks like he doesn't have anything to attack my Faropod. He doesn't have any... Yes, right, because my Faropod's cloaked as well. He has no Seppi Pods, so these Octopods are going to be destroyed fairly quickly. However, that doesn't mean, of course, they're going to be destroyed. Ultimately, though I am further in the past than Pandemic is, so I'm going to be having an easier time making my changes permanent. As well, I'm getting Lego class units. I want to get high-tech units. I don't know if, my, if Pandemic has as well. I almost assume he would, but I think I have an economic advantage at this point, because, like I said, he has control over this section and has taken some of it. And I have more options coming in just to double-check if I can take that expansion, but no, I cannot. I'll have to turn some of them into domes, probably, or just attack directly. And in the north, as you can see, I have most of the north expansion taken. So I do have an economic advantage at this point, but I need to be able to translate it into a technological and unit advantage. And that's where things are going to get tough. I do have Chrono Forty coming up as well, so at this point, or not so much at this point, but in about a minute or so, I will be able to send units back and start attacking. Basically start supporting my own attacks. Dome coming in as well, but it's not going to last very long, unfortunately. There's a Faropod, which is being countered by my own Faropod, but it's, of course, both of them are bombers, so not very effective against other air units. At this point, my attempt to expand to the bottom base has been thwarted. Unfortunately, I was far back in the past, so I can't go and undo that. At this point, I'm just more concerned about building up what I have, getting a dome in the north as well. But like I said, my opponent does not know that I have a north base from what I can tell. At least nothing I see indicates that he knows I have a north base. Chronoporting unit back just to support. So I have a Faropod Chronoporter back supporting that Octopod destruction, but that's not that big of a deal. Another Faropod coming in with Seppi Pod, and the domes coming in to destroy the Seppi's pods. I mean, those domes, those domes are lifesavers, let me tell you. Those things, that beam attack just... It's really hard to not like that beam attack, at least if you're using it. If you're against it, obviously, it'd be very easy not to like it. But using it, man, that thing's a lifesaver. So at this point, all of the forces of Pandemic coming in have been destroyed fairly handily. Actually, fairly efficiently, too. Unfortunately, I'm a bit distracted, so I haven't... I can see my resources, my resources are stocking up a bit. I need to build some more units. What I really need to do is get just a solid base defense, and then start building up legal class units. Which I'm going to try to do. 
Though, I think the domes really are covering me at this point. However, given that both of us are chronoporting, it's going to be hard to tell. My my biggest priority now is just to make sure that I can get my base defended against any chronoport attacks, which I'm sure Pandemic is bound to do. Doesn't look like anything is going to be happening in particular, though. I'm looking at the timeline. Nothing is suspicious. But, of course, Pandemic may be doing a delayed chronoport attack. And it looks like... Oh, actually, something is happening further back in the past right here. Looks like one of my attacks has actually been weakened again. Okay, and so my progen tread is not going to work. The Sepipods are coming in dealing a lot of damage. I'm going to try to get a Sepi League out first, but I don't think I'll have a chance. It looks like... Yes, I... Okay, actually, no. I will be able to get a Sepi League up, but it might be destroyed by the defense forces. And here we have the domes coming in again, once again, to destroy these Sepipods. But... Oh, crap. Farbots coming in afterwards. Wow, Pandemic was a nice faint. So Pandemic fainted out my dome beams at this point, so... I'm going to have a hard time dealing with this. It looks like further in the past, he actually has brought more Farpods in, probably chronoported them. And back when I was, it looks like my domes are intact, but are going to be destroyed very handily. So I need to bring some units back in the past, and it looks like I have just... Okay, this is going to be really tough. I have very little chrono energy, and I need to... Well, it's great. It's gaining now, but I need to make sure I get my units chronoported back into the past. And here we go. So a Sepipod is coming to the past. I don't know if it's in the best position to defend, though. And I have more Sepipods coming into the past as well to help defend, but it might be a little late. The Time Wave... No, it's not. No, the Time Wave has propagated that. So, the Sepipods should be very useful for defending my base. However, I'm not sure how effective they're going to be. It looks like in the future my domes have been heavily damaged. I haven't checked yet what's gone on, but I will find out fairly soon. Once I send my units to Chronoport to the past, and it looks like, okay, so the attack that came in is actually being thwarted in the past, back when it happened in the first place. But it looks like there might be an earlier attack coming in from Pandemic, it's hard to tell. There's These flashing red bits are attacks that I have not seen, so I'm suspicious of them, especially as the blue time wave is changing a lot of stuff, and that's making me really suspicious. I don't know what has gone on there. Supporting the Sepi Ligo would be favorite, but I'm not sure if I actually do that. Remember, this is a replay. I'm not actually playing this. I'm simply watching it again after the fact. Because trying to play a tournament game while commentating is going to be way too distracting. And oh my goodness, there's a lot of units there. Okay, so now my best bet is going to be trying to chronoport my own units back to, s to help themselves out. But I don't know how that's going to work. And it looks like it didn't really work at all. Okay, so there's a lot of units coming in. Huge attack force. I don't know how I'm going to be able to survive this. Sepi Ligo will help, but these domes... Okay, these domes do have some energy, and I will need to be chronoporting some units back as well. But, as it stands, there is a lot going on, and it looks like... Okay, so the domes are doing their job somewhat, but still, that was that's a huge attack force. I really need to get rid of those fire pods. Sepi Ligo is doing a lot of damage against Sepi Pods, thankfully. And it looks like, wow, the Sepi Ligo is actually going to help me too, but the domes are going to be what's going to save me, if anything saves me here. And it looks like... Oh boy, it looks like I'm just trying to make sure I know what's going on. Gotta just double check what's happening with my attack. And it looks like a time wave has come in and destroyed my Sepi Ligo. So it seems that Pandemic has microed around my Sepi Ligo and destroyed it. Sorry if that's a bit confusing. He would have gone back in the past and then attacked the Sepi Ligo. So the Sepi Ligo, or attacked the Progen Triad, so the Sepi Ligo was never made in the first place. So I'm in a really tight spot right now. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. At this point, one Sepi Pod versus two Sepi Pods and a Faro Pod... Oh my goodness, this is not going well at all for me. I'm going to need to get something up, but... Unless this dome can regenerate energy in time, I don't think I'm going to be able to save my own base. The spire is gone, so I can't build any more air units, but the dome did get rid of the fire pod, thankfully. That was close. But... All I really have now is... Octopod's going around just to attack. I'm just going to double check what he has at his base. I can't do much to save my own base at this point, apart from chronoporting. But I can go around and see if I can attack his base. Oh, they do have two steady pods. I wonder what they're doing hanging out here. I am low on chrono energy, though. That's probably what the problem is. So at this point, I've got to get myself really panicking. I've got to get my Sepi Paws... Okay, linked up to the Arcticus. So the Arcticus now has Sepi Paws linked up to it. And now they can go and attack. While well, at the same time, the Octopod is going around, just double-checking what's going on. And it looks like, back in the past, I chronoported back some units. So I have units coming in to attack what was going on. Just strengthening my own attack. This chronoport right here, and the departure would have been about... Our arrival would have been here, departure would have been here. So, that is fairly 
small defense force. I really don't know how my main base is going to survive this. Thankfully, I had this causally independent base, which, if my main base gets destroyed, is going to be able to sustain itself. So, at the very least, I'm going to have something to keep myself alive in the event that my main base is destroyed, which seems increasingly likely. Actually, you know what? No, looking back in the past, it looks like my carports have actually helped out. That was that was a few minutes back in the past, and it looks like my chronoports may have helped out. So I don't know exactly if I'm actually at risk that much. Or no, maybe not. No, never mind. Here they are. So here comes here comes the enemy cavalry. I'm gonna have a very hard time dealing with. This. Actually, I might have a hard time dealing with this if I can get rid of the sepi. No, I'm gonna be screwed. There's too many. As far as are just are really tipping the scales when, as far as getting rid of my sepi pods goes. So at this point, my only real choice is to try to basically use this dome as best as possible. I don't think it actually managed to do much. And, oh, did, okay, time wave came, and it looks like, oh, okay, my chronoported forces did help. Oh, thank goodness. So these are all the forces I chronoported back, and it looks like they actually did help out quite a bit, but further in the past, there's more attacks coming in that are hitting me harder than I'm hitting him. So, actually, no, actually, I'm hitting him harder than he's hitting me. So, actually, that's a good thing. It is still hitting me, though. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. My attacks, the blue part, I should say, is my damage. The red part is his damage. It looks like my damage ends about here and his damage continues. And it looks like he's also chrono boarded back something, or at least is watching what's going on there. So now I'm really worried and want to make sure I know what's going on. And, oh crap, yeah, he's got he's gotten into my base. He's destroyed the main triad. He's smashing up the Arcticus. I'm going to try to chrono back some units, but at this point I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do it. I'll need to chrono back units from this base because it is causally independent. So even if the other base is destroyed, and I do have a pod class triad as well, or pod class duo be able to build some Octoligos and Octopods later on. And then hopefully be able to build some Faroligos to help bomb out some stuff. At this point, I'm just going to go with Octoligo to try to get some attack around my opponent, around Pandemic, because at this point, I think my main base is destroyed. I'm going to at least try to return the favor, if nothing else. I don't know if he's expanded. I'm assuming he has, but I haven't seen any expansions yet. I've been mostly concerned about defense, and yeah, the blue time wave has carried the death. So my main base has been destroyed. My north base is my only base at this point. I might try to save my main base, but I really don't know how much I'm going to be able to do that. In all honesty, I think that my main base has been completely destroyed. And all I can really do is rely on the north base. Thankfully, the north base has resources, while my main base did not. I will have to get some more music processors, though. I have a couple a couple on the north side in general, and it looks like... Oh, managed to actually get rid of his main base as well. Corner back units went to attack, must have finished him off. So... That is going to be good. Yeah, so here we are. Here's, yeah, here's the units that I sent back. Chronoport. We missed this earlier, unfortunately. I was more focused on defense in my main base. But this is my attack of his main base, destroying his useless resource processors, or at least unused resource processors. They're not useless. You can move them around. So he didn't do that. And so now I got rid of his resource processors as he got rid of my resource processors. So it looks like that's my main base again. I'm, I think it's a lost cause trying to save it at this point. I can't see anything coming from it. I am attempting to save it, and I have some units have gone back to try to save it, but really, it looks like it's probably a lost cause. My main concern is now keeping my secondary base alive, my north base. And from here, hopefully I'll be able to build up another set of forces. And Did something mess up? Oh, I must have chronoported back this heavy pod. There's a heavy pod here that I used for a duo, and I must have chronoported it back, and then further in the future, gone and used it to progenerate, and that was a mistake. If I can send this heavy pod out to progenerate though, then that will be more useful and we'll be able to build up Octoligos from there or Octopods for another triad and then from there get Faroligos. And if I can chronoport back some Faroligos or Sepiligos, that would be really handy. Just as defense, as offense, as everything, because I, I don't know where his main base is. I'm guessing it's somewhere in the south because I already saw him have his base there. I'm going to try to get rid of his units as they are now, though I'm not sure how much good that will do. They're, that's further in the future and frankly he's not doing anything with them right now. But it's probably worth getting rid of in the first place. And further back in the past, just trying to chronoport back. Just to double check if I can at least damage the units. And apparently no. I, I can damage them a bit, deal some, but it's not going to be enough to... I mean, that base is already gone. And really, it's not that useful. As a position, maybe? If I'm worried about this base being destroyed, it might be a good idea to make a causally independent base back here. But I don't have any resources left. All the boxes are empty. So there's really nothing to gain from investing in that particular location. Apart from having causal independence, but at this point, this base is fairly well defended. It's got a lot more air units coming up. It has another Progen's Epipod. Okay, 
I must have gotten confused about which one was which. Anyway, here's the forces coming in that were destroyed, that will be destroyed by this blue time wave that hasn't hit here yet, because we're right here, the blue time wave's back here. But when that happens, it'll be a lot easier for those seppies to do something. However, at this point, my main concern is just getting rid of what air units I can get rid of before they chrono, because it doesn't look like he's chronoported any air units back. So if I can get rid of them before they chronoport, then he can't go back in time with them and do any more damage. Because the thing with chronoporting is that, yes, it does affect the past, but it uses units from the future. If you can hit units in the future and then use them to affect the past, or prevent them from affecting the past, then you're in a good position. However, I don't know if he's chronoported yet. It's really hard to tell. I see no suspicious attacks on my timeline, but I really don't know. I do have an Octopod coming in as well, so I can actually build Far Legos. I can't build Seppi Legos, unfortunately. The Octopod and Seppi the Octopod and Faropod are a bit too far away, but I can build Faro Legos, which are a bit more important. It looks like my Seppi Pods are doing a very handy job of getting rid of my opponent, and might as well just start hitting this base again, because I was aware of that base earlier. It's the only expansion that I know of. I can't see... I have some units scouting out other expansions, and that one's empty anyway. This one doesn't seem used. That... The south one here is used as well, and I'm going to be sending some more units back. I believe the Octo Lego, but I'm not 100% sure. Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty sure I send the Octoligo back at this point. But, at any rate, I do see that most of the expansion... So the expansion has been mostly destroyed. And what is there... I mean, he's gotten most of the resources anyway, so I can't really do much with it. And here we are. Here's the Octoligo. So the Octoligo has been chronoported back. I don't think it's going to be doing too much good, though. But I'll just leave it to his own devices. And at the same time, I need to get some Far Legos up. I need to get... Oh, what's this? Another Far Pod. Okay. That's good to know. I can see another Farapod back there, and another attack here. It looks like the attack... Was the attack cancelled, or just defended? Because I can see him dealing a lot of damage back here with this green time wave is, and it hasn't caught up to me yet. And here we are. Okay, so just get rid of this Farapod back here, just in case. Or, get rid of the... <laughs> okay, that was a misclick. I misclicked on the resource box, but I meant to get rid of the Farapod. I don't think it matters, though. It looks like the green time wave... Yeah, the green time wave got around that. Those units went around to here, and... Oh, hey, here's a Seppi. I wonder what that's doing here. Anyway, I got, a, I got some Faro Legos to Chronoport back. I'm just going to see, the only place I haven't really checked is around here. And if he's playing Hide and Seek there, then that will be the place to check. Though I'm a bit worried he may have found my base too, because really, how many places can... Oh my goodness, yes, I'm right, he found my base. So yeah, here's here's a Faro Pod that's found my base. Faro Legos came in. Okay, hopefully the Faro Legos can come in and destroy the Faro Pod before the Octopod is destroyed. But unfortunately, no, it's not, because the Octopod's been destroyed. Crap, so those Faro Legos in a sense, don't really exist. The dome is going to be able to do some damage, though, but these Faro Legos are living on Borrowed Meta Time. They really do not actually have any causal consistency, because they built them all from the Octopod, and that was a bit of a mistake. Anyhow, I will... Actually, I needed the Octopod anyway. That That's part of what is needed to build a Faro Lego. And here we are. Okay, so I found his base, found his triad, and it looks like he actually doesn't have a, any pod class triads at this point. And just jumping around, just double check that I have all the attacks set up properly. And now I see, so I have the Far Legos coming in. Okay, Far Legos coming in, hitting the Spire, and basically I'm trying to create a paradox in my own favor, because these Far Legos, like I said, they should not exist. And once the once this time wave comes to propagate the fact that the Octopod wasn't there to produce them, they are not going to exist. So all I can really do at this point is try to destroy stuff. And okay, good. So Pandemic, oh, whew, that was... That was a close match. So, really, at that point, Pandemic had damaged a lot of my base. My Faro Legos, like I said, living on Borrowed Meta Time. But, man, that was close. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.